sweet. So uh, here are our uh, final project presentations for uh, phase five. Y'all have been working on it for uh, almost three weeks and uh, we saw the MVPs last week and uh, they were really cool then. So uh, I expect these are gonna be even more cool now. I'm super stoked to see what y'all got. Uh, we're just gonna jump into it and we're gonna start off with Henry. Uh, Henry, take it away. All right, Alan, thank you. Um, okay. All righty. So, um, if y'all can see that, um, I want to present to you my uh, Flatiron Phase 5 final project. Um, I've decided to call it Nose Goes uh, because it's an event planning app. And I feel like a lot of times um, people don't like planning. So, they play that classic game, like Nose Goes, to like try and decide who's going to make the decisions. Um, but yeah, so let's get into it. So the first thing I kind of want to show is the sign up page, just because that's how um, any new user is going to access the app. Um, so let's just sign up name. Um, let's just do Henry Yoon. Password, um, you can kind of just do anything. And then I have a confirmed password just to get that confirmation going. First name, last name, and then phone number. Oh, phone number, let's do 888. You sign up, and it's going to take you back to the login page. You'll just sign up using that, um, what you just signed up with. So we kind of get into this login page, and right now, uh, there's no created events or participating events. Um, so let's create an event first. So if we create an event, um, let's just call it bootcamp graduation party. Uh, so hopefully we get that this Saturday. Uh, and then I think 4 p.m. is a great time to have some sort of dinner party. So you hit create room. And then it'll create a card um, just to kind of show that it's working. And then if you kind of come back home under created events, there's no longer going to be the message and you're going to have bootcamp graduation party. So there's a couple options you can do here. Um, you can edit kind of the details. So um, let's just uh, show that. Same day, but let's say for whatever reason it got pushed back an hour. So if you save it, um, this is going to go from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. And uh, another thing I want to point out is the participants section right here. So right now there's a message that says no participants yet. So let's go in and add them. So we can go into this inter room and every party needs balloons and this section this page here um, it's kind of like the boot camp graduation party planning room so um, I kind of intended this section to have elements of an event so uh, like every event like let's say like a party it needs like balloons it needs like guest lists it needs like whatever so these are kind of like the events elements that I kind of wanted to do so let's say balloons, we want to assign it to someone named Eric, who will add on as a participant later. Uh, we can add them. You can also do something like budgeting wise, like we can do like venue, and then we can just do and then add them. So these elements are kind of open ended, you can kind of make it whatever you want. And um, so right now we have at Eric, so let's add Eric as a participant. So if I were to click add participant, um, I don't know if the alert boxes show up through Zoom sharing for Mac, but if I click it, it's gonna show an error message because I haven't added Eric U27 as a friend yet. So if I click it, there's an alert bubble. I don't know if y'all can see that, but if you come back home, it'll still say no participants yet. 
So if we go into the friends, we can look him up. Add them on as friends. The card will confirm and the button will change to unfriend. So this is live. We can add them. We kind of come back home. We go into the room. And then we can add him. And then there's an alert button that says Eric Yoon 27 successfully added as participant. We come back home and it'll render right here. The cool thing I like about this app is if we go into Eric Yoon 27 profile. Uh, also, I have this like cool like toggle feature where you can kind of see the password. Come in and uh, <laughs> I guess he's invited to graduation parties for boot camps, both by someone named Henry Yoon. Um, you can see under participating events that he's in. Uh, one thing I want to point out is you can't edit the details or delete them, but you can enter them and also contribute to the event planning process. So let's say um, Cake, someone named Henry is in charge of that. He can add and then it'll come up right here. And then I also have a neat little checkbox that allows you to kind of check them off as you go. Uh, the final small feature I have is you can edit the profile. So I believe I'm in Eric's. So let's say I want to change my first name. I accidentally misspelled it upon sign up. If I hit Eric's profile, it'll render to Eric. And then I can, of course, change it back. And yeah, I believe that is my project. Awesome. I wouldn't get a round of applause there. Um, super, super slick. Uh, very, very nice and clean. <clears throat> um, anyone have any questions about this? Ooh, I guess uh, a standard question for me is: um, if you had another week or two to work on this, what would you? What would you add? Um, I was really trying to incorporate a chat box into the event planning room mm. so that, um, like. <laughs> the whole point of it was to try and like consolidate all the event planning processes like into one app. Mm -hmm. And I was I was having a hard time figuring out like how to like incorporate a chat box that rendered to each room. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm sure I could have done it, but I think uh, it was like a mixture of like uh problem solving difficulties slash like motivating because that was the last thing I had. Yeah. Um, uh, but um. I feel like this is something I want to use going forward because uh, me and my friends, we are horrible at planning stuff and it always kind of falls through. So I feel like it'd be kind of cool to get it deployed and incorporate a chat box eventually. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. Uh, anyone have anything else? Sweet. Great stuff. I love it. Uh, who would you like to go next? Um, I will pass it to Colin. Awesome. All right, uh, I have a video. Will it pick up the audio on Zoom? Um, play it. It should. If not, there's a setting to. I, I think it's in the upper left uh, with the audio to use original audio. Uh, go ahead and start playing and see if we can hear it. Okay. Uh, can you hear it? I don't hear anything now. No, that's where is it on the top? Uh, it's it's in the audio settings or maybe in the upper left. To uh, I think it's use original audio. Uh, I'll just I'll just do it live. <laughs> cool. Yeah, that <laughs> yeah, works too. Uh, let me find it. So you can see this, right? Yeah. All right. So this is my portfolio site. Move this out of the way. Uh, I'll start it off by showing the kind of sign up thing. So if I want to create a new account, I can just like new test user and then a password. Kind of the same thing, password validation. If it, they don't match, it won't let you create an account. I can sign up. It's kind of gives you a home page because this account doesn't have any, it doesn't own any stocks or anything yet. So there's not going to be much information. So for the sake of that, I'll log into an account that has stuff. So kind of right off the bat, 
this is the home page. It has a uh, has a marquee at the top that shows you the current indices. So Dow Jones Industrial, Nasdaq Composite, Standard Poor's Five Hundred. So it can kind of you can kind of look at it upon login and see a uh, kind of how the market is doing right now. So you can see the Dow's down three hundred points. S and P is only down fifteen, and the Nasdaq's holding on to a little bit of a gain. And on the homepage, there's top stock gainers. So it'll be uh, five of the best performing stocks right now on a percentage basis. And then the same thing for the stock losers. So five worst performing stocks on a percentage basis basis right now. And I also have a news feed. So the news feed will only show you articles for stocks that you own. So I own shares of Meta. I'll get articles about Facebook. I own shares of Amazon. I'll get articles about Amazon. And then you can click on them. It'll take you to the article if you want to read it. So moving on to the watch list. This is like the watch list. So for stocks, maybe I, I own Apple and I want more updated information, more detailed information about that stock or a stock that I'm thinking about purchasing. Maybe I want to know more information about that. So you can see the current price of Apple, the price change right now, 40 cents, the percentage you can also see other important information that you might want to know. So the pre the previous close, what Apple closed at yesterday, what it opened at this morning, the 200-day moving average price, price to earnings ratio, and then the current trade volume. So Apple's traded 31 million stocks today. And then on an average day, you'll trade about 60 million. And there's also a candlestick chart here. So this is today's trading. So you can see open, high, low, close information on it. If you want to zoom in on a particular part of the day, you can see the a more detailed view of that. And you can see other stocks that you're that you're watching. So I'm watching Amazon Meta, Cloudflare, Advanced Microdynamics. You can remove stocks from your watch list. So say I don't want to, I don't want to watch AMD anymore. I can remove it. And say I want to watch Intel instead. So I can type in the ticker, add to watch list, and it'll pop up at the bottom. So I can start watching that stock now. And so moving on to holdings, these are the stocks that I own. So say I own, you can see the symbol, the name, the current share price, the change, a dollar amount per share, the change of percent, the quantity that I own, the total value change. So that's the 18 shares that I own, the amount that it's changed throughout today, and then the total value. So you can see that for all of the stocks. And then this will update throughout the day in real time as the price changes. So moving on to update. So if I want to add stocks, say I want to buy shares of Tesla, I can search the Tesla ticker. It'll give me some information, the share price. I can specify how many shares I want to buy. So maybe I want to buy 10 shares. It'll give you a total price. I can add that. And now that'll pop up on my holdings. So I can see that now I own 10 shares of Tesla. So say I wanted to sell some of that, I can go to sell. You can search it. It'll show the share price, the number of shares that I own. So I just bought 10. I own 10. I can sell, what, two of them? I'll give you a price. You can confirm that. If I go back to holdings, I only own eight now. And uh, if I want to say further down the line, I want to sell all the Tesla shares that I own. Oops. You can see now I only own eight. I can add eight here. It won't let you go higher because you can't sell more than you own. I'll go ahead and sell that. And now on holdings, you won't see Tesla anymore because I don't own it, own it anymore. So it won't be in my personal holdings. And then there's a transaction history section. So it'll give me all of the trades that I've ever made on this account. So it'll show you the date it was the trade was made, the symbol and the name of the company that you traded, whether I bought or sold it, the amount of the quantity of shares that I traded, the share price at that time, and also the total amount of the purchase or sell. So if I go to the end, you can see the three Tesla orders. So the buy, buy of 10 for the $1,690, the, and then the two sellers for the two and the eight. And you can see the information there. And then the last section, I have a US representative trading thing. So there's the Stop Trading on Congressional Knowledge Act or the Stock Act. It basically requires members of Congress, government officials to disclose trades over a thousand dollars 
And then you can see this. So this is pinging a API endpoint where it'll return the most recent most recent reportings that have been made. So you can kind of see who it is. So you can see the transaction date that it was made, what they were trading, the transaction type. So purchase, sale, partial sale, full sale, the amount that was traded, the representative name, and then the district that they're from. So it's just kind of interesting to see what some people are trading. Like uh, you can see Susan Del Benny from the Washington First District bought um, one to five million dollars of U.S. Treasury bills. So not, she's not doing too bad. And then Washington First, I think that's Bellevue, Redmond area. And if you look at most of the big purchases are right, currently our U.S. Treasury bills, because probably because of a uh, higher interest rates right now, something people might want to buy, especially if you have millions of dollars. And then you can kind of see, it's interesting to see who trades the most, what they're trading. You can obviously see some representatives are a lot more active in trading than others. And I just think it's something interesting to look at. And then, yeah, that's pretty much it. I do have something else to show that is also a video. It doesn't need audio though. So what this is basically is, is that when the market, when the stock market's closed in the marquee, it'll say that it's closed. And when the stock market opens, it'll go away. And then you can see the, the ticker start moving. So if I play it through, you'll see right now the market's closed. You can see that the market's closed, but in a second, it should that should go away and you should start seeing the ticker start to move. So I'll, I'll let that play out. So there you go, the market's open. And then you should start seeing the ticker start moving now because the trading, the day started trading. So prices are starting to move up and down. And that's kind of the last thing that I wanted to show. And that's pretty much it. Awesome. The ticker is rad. Uh, what did you use to implement that? The So I used Apex charts for the chart. And so for the ticker, it's a it's like a API that I, endpoint that I used. Like it's it's a paid one. So mm. it was that was kind of nice, but it gave me a lot of like uh information. So yeah, it's it's a lot of fetch requests. Oh cool. And that I was yeah. With fetch requests. Yeah. But that was one thing that if I had more time, there the API has a WebSocket. Yeah. So that would have been a lot more efficient to use. Mm -hmm. but uh like the rate limit i was rate limited to like 750 calls a minute so i, I had plenty of like headroom so for the pro sake of the project it was fine but like further down line probably would have been a lot more efficient to use a web socket yeah for sure yeah. Oh, it's, uh, cool any questions for anyone else rad who would you like to go next i'll pass it over to saki nice all right Okay, let me share my screen. Hold on. All right. Can you all see the screen? Okay, I can see. Yeah, okay. All right. So um it's only changed since the demo last week. Um it's like visually, but I added some um like functionality and finish like yeah setting up the functionality mainly um so this is an app designed to help property owners um manage their expenses and the idea is that um yeah like i mentioned last week um you can sleep like a cute little panda while this app does the work for you so um yeah and there are two types of users owners and agents and Let's just check out the owner account, one of the owner accounts. This is the login page. Let me check my notes for the account formation. Julie 13. Julie. <clears throat> you can log in here. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think we're in. So then um 
right off the bat, you get more options once you log in. Um, this is available to anybody, but um, these two are only available to login user. So the thing I added uh, since last time is the map. <clears throat> so it shows the markers for the properties that you own on the map. So it's kind of nice to just to, it's um, kind of like a visual thing, but I thought it was nice to, to see where they are. And you can also see the units. And if you click on them, you can see the lease information for this unit and also tenant information. Um, I wanted to add the function to e to be able to like email the tenant uh, through this app. So I added this thing where you can just, yeah, email the tenant. Uh, but hold on, I have to change the email, <laughs> his email first. Oh, hold to the demo email. So yeah, you can also change the details. Let's just change based on rent. And you can email as landlord. Like uh, your rent is overdue. And then, uh, I don't know if you can see, but it says email sent. And the alert pops up when you send it. And let me just move this bar so I can show the email. And then you get the email. Your rent is overdue. So, <clears throat> oops, sorry. <laughs> and then um, you can also delete as well. And, oops. Oh, here. So, um, yeah, uh, this user became the, you know, property or a uh, real estate mogul and um, he wants to buy more. Um, another thing that I added is the autocomplete for address. So you can search by like, like Google, Google Maps addresses. And what's nice about it is that you can um, search by uh, landmarks as well. So like, you can even like put Eiffel Tower and then it will pick up the property. You probably need an agent to handle that kind of biggest uh, property. So you can assign an agent and yeah, it's added. And uh, if it's handled by an agent, if you assign an agent to a property, it, it's going to show managed by Christopher, uh, the username and also the agent's email. And if you open it up, because there's no unit, you'll get a different view. <clears> then <throat> you can also add like a unit information, say floor and then rental property. And then let's say occupied. And then if you open it up, you can add new lease. Um, let's use my pet that I had, um, all right, and example, start date, date, and then it's, um, I thought I also, I will put 30,000 and then Coco is paying for herself. Uh, uh, no, she's paying a pet deposit for herself to live there, and it shows up here. So what's doing behind? Uh, no, under the hood is it creates the lease information in lease instance of the class, and also it's also creating the tenant instance at the same time. Oh, it's not really at the same time because you have to create the tenant first. And then assign that, uh, get the data from the database and then use the tenant ID to create this instance. So yeah, just for like this one click, it's called, <laughs> it's doing a lot of work, but it doesn't look that way, but yeah. And also um, once you have these set up, you can finally add the expenses. So that's like the main feature of the app. Um, so yeah, uh, you can see uh, the, the whole expenses and income here. You can also sort or filter by a property. And 
Oh, because there's no expenses and income here. Let's add something about well, rent. Um, $30,000. And oh, there's no unit assigned to this one yet. So and submit and you'll be able to see it here. Uh, and you can also like once you like when you're seeing all the expenses, you can't really generate the report. But uh, once you select the property, you can generate um, a report for that. And it calculates the total based off of what you have. And this is by year. So um, if you want to see other year, you, you'll have to like click on the other ones. Right now, I don't have anything for other years. So it's not showing up. But yeah, the filter is working. And, and this is the profile uh, section. So it just says the username, the type of the account owner, and it says Happy Panda since 2023. So just pulling the information from the created out uh, column. And also you become a panda when you sign up for this application. So you get like a peekaboo <laughs> when you hover over this uh yeah and then the email and it shows how many properties you own and uh once you like uh, i'm gonna switch over to the agent account agent please all right so now we're in the agent. Oops, sorry. Why did it? Okay, we're back. Um, yeah, so here. So this is the agent view. You only get to see the one that you're managing. And you can't really add or edit property information. It's just uh, managing Eiffel Tower for now. <laughs> And then, yeah, you can't change uh, anything about the units either, but you can edit uh, lease information and tenant information. So the agent is probably like listing or um, yeah, making changes to the lease information. Um, so let's say Christopher was um, notified that the phone number changed. And maybe rent increase. And it yeah changes any um user uh not the user agent can still email the tenant like owners and also delete like this and then you get a different view and uh what else and oh um I and this is also a contact form you don't have to be logged in but um you can say uh, using a, uh, a random name. Do you wanna leave a comment like this? It says email sent, and then you get an email because all the emails goes to this, um, this email address. It's a register for property panda. It's a registered email for Property Panda. So you get email or some website. And yeah, this is it. Awesome. That's a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, it's a technical question, I guess, but I remember you were having, uh, you're wrestling with how to do the, uh, you know, users versus uh, agents stuff in the, database models uh, can you talk a little bit about that because that was really oh yeah um i'll share my screen um so user um agent and owners are both coming from the same table and uh where is it the models so it turns like my issue was such a Weird issue. Like, um, so I just had to like get rid of S from here. Uh, for some reason I had like extra S here and it was breaking the whole application. But um both 
the building managers, the agents, and the owners are from this user table. And what I did to differentiate them is the type. So it says owner. So in the table, it would say owner or the agent. And also for the relationship, it says properties for um, owners, but also agent properties for agent. So, and then it's like kind of saying that, hey, it's a property.owner ID. Um, is even though property table is just using ID from the user. So you're kind of like naming this ID to be a owner ID. And then, yeah, for, so you're kind of using the same property table um, for different purposes. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, that's 100%. But the problem that I had was just, yeah, having extra S agents <laughs> properties. <laughs> and it was, yeah, breaking the whole thing. Uh, but yeah, that was it. But <laughs> Cool. Uh, any questions from anyone else? All right, good stuff. Oh, uh, oh yeah, I go was going to ask about implementing the uh, Google Maps. Mm. Mm -hmm. what, what, what did that, you know, how, how hard was that? What did that entail? How long did that take you? Stuff like that? Um, so you get, uh, you sign up for the service, right? Uh, Google Maps, and then you get an API key. And I think it was uh, probably, yeah, am I still sharing the page? Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm going to. It was pretty the the Google showing Google Maps was pretty simple. Um, the showing the markers were more complicated, but here a uh, property page. Oh, I ended up not using this, but a uh, property page. So you would just get uh this one, and then use load script. So this is how you get the you know um set the Google API key. And then this is for places, like library equals places, uh, just an attribute that this um, function needs uh, just to get the Google Maps function. And then here, where's the map? So yeah, you just have this. And then center is set in just the, the map to be centered whenever the page refreshes. And the, this is just set in the height and the width. And then markers are for the, the pins on the maps. And it took me a while to figure out. And I, um, I for the first time, I like asked a question on a Stack Overflow and nobody answered. So I don't know if anybody knew how to do it, but yeah, it was like I was playing with it and got to like, yeah, got to the point where I could like render this, but it was a struggle for, for, for sure. But I think if it's just one marker that's not dynamically um, generated, it's simpler, but because it's, yeah, it was, yeah, it was kind of complicated, but showing the Google map wasn't, that hard. I hope that helped. Thank you. Yeah. Question. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Perhaps that was always super impressive. I love it. Uh, awesome. Mm -hmm. There's no more questions. Who would you like to go next? Oh, um, I'll pass it over to Miles. Cool. Hit it. Oops, uh, give me just one second to get it all pulled up. All right. Okay. So, um, I don't want to get anyone's hopes up, but mine is a little a little less practical or pretty <laughs> compared to some of the others, but I hope you all still enjoy. Uh, let's see. 
Hold on. There we go. All right. Welcome to the most garish web page ever made. Uh, this here is just a... Uh, it's called the Frog Tarot. I think I went over it earlier with you guys. It's the uh, a nice expansion on an, on an old project that I'd made way back at the start of all this. And uh, yeah, this is just a nice semi-updated conversion of the original web page with some mild changes. Um, I mean, in terms of styling, in terms of functionality, oh, baby. 100% improved. Um, let's basically just get right into it. Uh, so you can log in or sign up with an account. Um, if you aren't signed in, all you can really do is view stuff, but uh, that's all right. Let's just, uh, let's just sign up with a new account. Um, let's go with the uh, username just going to be... Um, Frog Enjoyer 86. I want the email be my real email. And then password. We'll just put that in as T for now. I believe that worked. Yep. As you can see up here, we're all logged in. And then this is this is the main attraction. This is what you're all here for. You click this button and you get a, a brilliant hand tooled uh <laughs> tarot card slash personality reading complete with professional art i actually commissioned a guy to get this art done and he backed out so i drew it myself um here we've pulled the emperor it comes with a cute little quippy description as well as a, a nice fortune to go along with it some nice randomly generated lucky numbers if you click here you can open up a little form to uh, post a nice pre-made um, post over onto the, the forum. I, yeah. Uh, I would do that, but hitting that will refresh the page and then we'll lose this. So I'll go over the comments first. Down here, you can make a new comment. Um, oh, right. You can also have a copy of your tarot reading emailed directly to you with the, the click of a button powered by this nice program that I found called Email JS, which is just delightfully easy to use. Um, yeah, the uh, you can leave comments on any of these. They'll be attached to the actual thing. Uh, it can be a bit of a crapshoot to find your comment amidst all 23 cards but you know just leave a comment here just saying like um wow perfect <laughs> it's submit that does refresh the page so how about we just go hunting for the emperor again uh fuck the uh, shoot there we go et voila my comments right here and that, when you hover over it it gives me some options of things I can do. I can edit the comments contents. I can just delete it. I think I'm going to delete it. Et voila. And it's gone. Perfect. Um, yeah, I would gladly, there's a lot in here, uh, to find. And I'm also not good at reading my own writing to people. So I, I guess I'll just leave like a link to the GitHub repository if you want to check this out yourselves. Um, see what reading you get. Uh, as for the actual boards, check it out. This here is the Ouija boards because it's like a it's like a like a fortune telling occult type gimmick. Um, and yeah, it's just a nice standard kind of generic forum. You've got some pretty bare bones posts, admittedly, but it's it's good enough to get a nice little community going. It has a profanity filter in place. So uh, if you'll pardon me, I'll try to submit a comment with a, a swear word. Et voila.
it didn't go through. Uh, yeah. You can also make a post. Um, same thing here. Can't put swears anywhere in the title or body. Let's we'll call this uh, a little content will be um, just a nice smiley face. Uh, yeah, you can leave your comments. If you're the original creator of a post, you can edit your post. Uh, so we're going to change this to be a frowny face. If voila, it works perfectly. You can also choose to just straight up delete your post, which just automatically boots you back to the main page. And as you can see, my post is gone. Uh, the final functionalities to mention are Users have a, a little page, which is admittedly a little underdeveloped, but that's mostly because, you know, it's not really about the users. It's about the, the community as a whole. That's why get, they've got a bio uh, and a button to delete the user. So here, let me, let me show the cool thing about this. If I just like spam a bunch of posts in here, let's, so we got these two posts down here. I go to my account and I delete self, boots us back to the main page. We head over to the boards. It automatically deletes my posts and any comments I've left on any other posts, which is super convenient. Just instantly purges you completely from the database. Uh, and yeah, other than that, there's a log out button, but oh, well, we can't really log in. The account's dead. And uh yeah, that's about it. It's not nearly as advanced as some of the other uh, things here, but, you know, sometimes you got to have something cute and weird to, have to populate the internet. <laughs> Just like the good old days. Love mm -hmm. it. GeoCities, <laughs> baby. <laughs> Get those flaming skulls up. <laughs> um, cool. Uh, anyone have questions about this? Uh, I, I guess I'll ask you again. Uh, if you uh, had another week or two to work on it, what what sort of stuff would you add to it? I would totally add a personality quiz somewhere, just like <laughs> one of those, you know, one of those like crappy BuzzFeed ones where it's like five questions, and it's really obvious what results you're gonna get when you pick a, a certain answer. You know what I mean? Nope. Like, go look up uh, what Power Ranger am I quiz stuff like that. It's like, what's your favorite color? Uh, red. Well. <laughs> That's the Get one. This. <laughs> You're the Red Ranger. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Uh, cool. Who would you like to go next? Um, I'll pass it on to uh, Gail. Sweet. All right. I do have to figure out how to share audio for mine because you did not hear anything last time. Uh, okay, share sound. Sick. Uh, can you see this i was thinking honestly from where i was last week in terms of like the look of everything it there isn't that much that is new what's i added was more like behind the scenes stuff and what was going on in terms of like deleting an account things like that so I thought it would just be fun to just go through kind of my slides again, like briefly, and then I'll play the video um, to just talk about kind of what I wanted to do initially and like what I accomplished, I guess. Um, so initially I <clears throat> wanted to do just like a simple, I didn't know how tough 3JS is going to be. So <clears throat> I wanted to just do like a, kind of glowy ball that like responds to just I guess the loudness of the sound so depending on like how 
loud the audio was or the pitch or something uh it would glow a different color um and but I like pretty early on figured that out so I think that's why this past week I was like not as motivated to work on like new features because I was like oh I did all of the hard stuff the first week and I I like completely exceeded my my goals with that um uh yeah uh so the stuff I used is all listed here uh I used recoil and it was pretty that that was probably one of the major changes I implemented um since last week um yeah this is the I did some more stuff with the audio analyzer involving like pitch um but in terms of styling and everything else was pretty much the same um these are my models pretty simple four table um situation got users got favorites you got table for color palettes and all of the the visualizers go in there and I had also the songs with their URLs in a different um, table. Um, that's just the calendar, which I had to update a lot throughout the process. Um, okay, and play the video now. I am very ready to get some. Can coffee. you hear that? Okay. Okay. Cool. I am very ready to get some coffee after this presentation. That is all. I am very ready to get some coffee after this presentation. That is all. And I, I cut this, so it's a lot faster right now. <clears throat> oh, there we go. I am very ready to get some coffee after this presentation. That is all. So, but I, I guess what I added since then is just changing the like color based on the different pitches. So um, there's like an array of uh, like a 12, um, an array length of 12, which is, um, you know, different notes, which is representative of different notes. And what I was doing is taking what is like the, uh, so what the analyzer is doing is reading um, just how much of each note it can hear and whatever has like the max note is like uh, what, like I assign them, I map them to different colors essentially. So different notes are mapped to the the different yeah the different colors in the color palette essentially um so they're changing based on that and uh with like a little random function that I added um and so that was with I'm also just testing it with like uploading audio don't ask me why I have the sound of a cat purring in my of audio files, but I do for some reason. Um, and so it just shows the file name instead of just playing it back because you can play it back when you're uploading. Um, yep. Let's 
get a little message that it's uploaded. <clears throat> There you are. <laughs> Can't tell me that's not a relaxing sound. <clears throat> and I think I'm just <clears throat> showing the favorites functionality again. Um and I think the edit profile stuff. So I added thing like it's nothing you can see visually, but I added a thing when you delete your profile. <clears throat> uh, because I am using um, Cloudinary, which takes like the sounds that you make and it, it gives you back like a URL so that it's like uploaded to the cloud essentially. Like I hadn't, I had forgot that when you delete the account, like we should also delete it off of Cloudinary. So I'm just, there's like a fetch when you delete your account to um, get all of their, those audio tracks for, for that user and delete those. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much, I feel like it's a very simple, just pretty to look at app, you know, but I'm I'm proud of how it looks and it works and yeah. Awesome. I think if I had I mean you if I had more time, that question, <laughs> I would I tried to this week actually like look at like um like machine learning libraries because the it takes so it's so slow with generating to get a response back that like I was like I, maybe I could just do this on my own so if I had more time I definitely would use like a, just make the model myself mm -hmm. um and I think it would just be a lot faster than that um but yeah I don't know maybe I will continue to work on that <clears throat> before I like deploy this because yeah I want it to be faster definitely yeah, that's, that's really sweet. Um, <clears throat> I was actually going to ask the uh, sort of a flip question. Uh, what kind, like what kind of there's a lot of like interesting stuff in here. Uh, what kind of things do you feel like you learned doing this project specifically that you would use in a future project? Um, well, I learned a lot about WebGL. Um, definitely. Uh, so just like uh, computer graphics and like understanding that language. Um a lot better than I ever thought I would. Um, uh, what else did I learn? I don't know. I learned um, there are a lot of cool functions that can read, like read what's in images really well, because I had to look at functions that were reading like colors based on like, and they, they can read like so many colors. Like it's kind of crazy. Um, I, I learned how to use blobs. So that was like, um, to record the audio, mm -hmm. you have to de deal with these things called blogs, blobs, which are like these, um, like objects essentially, um, that are used for like file storage or whatever. Um, and knowing how I feel like knowing how to just work with those would be very helpful in the future and um yeah because it would extend to like videos or you know um just storing like things to the cloud in general was like super helpful and to know how to do so yeah super cool uh, anyone else have any questions all right great stuff love it uh, who is up next? I mean, uh, Gail, who is up next? <laughs> oh, always forget to do that. Um, let's go, Christian. Cool, hit it. 
All right. Um, so I made a uh, demo game. Um, and I will share it now. All right. So this is what I currently have. So we refresh. We'll just do a quick refresh. Take a sit on the screen. Um, basically, these are like the little credits. Once it loads, we're going to see the main menu, um, which is this right here. Um, if we log out, this basically takes us to the login screen, which is either login or, or register. I pretty much showed that on the demo version. So we're just going to go through um, the main fe features. Um, same thing. Um, do I have anything on my continue file? I know nope, it's all new. OK. Um, if I go to the demo, we're going to go ahead and create a character like we did previously. Um, just random information generated. Um, and like last time, you have different classes, which you get different sprites. Uh, so male, knight, gunslinger, archer, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, depending on what you want to pick. Uh, we'll go with the standard. Um, want to confirm it. And then we'll just create another one just so I can show you guys. Um, let's go again. It doesn't really matter. Um, male. And then this time we'll go with this right here. Confirm. OK, so we continue. It basically takes us to our load screen, which shows the files that we have saved, um, the little icon and the current level. We could edit this, or we could delete the actual character. Um, if we click on this, it'll basically send us to the actual game, um, which we start off right here. So it's basically completely interactive. So basically, you have the character walking. Um, and then what I wanted to do, which I couldn't get a chance to, but it still meets MVP, is um, I wanted to implement battle uh, function, but with the amount of time that I had, I wasn't able to do that. Um, so I couldn't get that far. This morning, I tried to at least make an inventory system, which still I wasn't able to do, but I got as far as whenever I get to this chest here, I'm able to trigger a function um, that... Um, sends a patch uh, to my database where I'd be able to, uh, um, no, I'm sorry, not a patch, a post, where I would have post the item that would be found in that chest to the character's inventory. Uh, but I was in there, I ran into a little bit of problems in the morning, so I decided to leave that as my stretch goals. Um, but what's cool is I got a main menu. So in the main menu, we have item, which these don't work, just a tile screen. Uh, you got the character's name, uh, the job class right here, the HP and the MP. If we go back to title screen, go back to continue again. If we decide to play as this character, which I think it's the incorrect one, but we'll pretend that isn't the case. Uh, you'll switch characters. So regardless of what character you play as, I think I, I always had issues between these two characters, between these two sprites, I, I believe they, they're they backwards. Um, but if we choose to create a new, say, a female, um, we'll create a female knight. Um, sure, why not? Sure. Um, confirm. Go back to continue. And then if you click on it, and then it'll you'll play as that character as well. Each of these have its own uh, unique uh, instances. So whatever this character does, ideally is gonna stay with this file, um, such as if I would have gotten this inventory working, that inventory would be specifically only to this, this character right here. Um, and if we were to go and say we want to, um, Edit, we get, oh, uh, let's go back a little bit. Um, I think, let us, go here. That's not supposed to show, it's only supposed to show this one. Um, let me see. I think my code, I was messing with something in my code earlier. And I don't think that 
it's properly working. Hold on, give me a minute. Let me start. Let me a little bit of troubleshooting here. Um da, da, da. we'll just uh pause this for the time being. All right, so we have And then let's do this. Let's run that. Let's start from the beginning. Just so I can see that this is working real quick. Let's ignore all of this. Okay, so I guess we could sign up. So sign up, come on. Whatever, run one. Okay, I'm pretty sure it's supposed to work now. Let me see. So create, create, create. Oh, nice. Okay. And then if we were to edit, there we go. Okay, yeah. So, and then we'll go with Tim, I guess. Confirm. And then it's Tim right there. Yeah. And then if we delete it, then it's not there anymore. Um. So if we were to create a new one, let's go with this one. Let's go with that. Go so with whatever region, female, confirm, continue, play, and then again, we'll be playing as this character. So that's pretty much uh, my demo. Like I said, I would have preferred to add more interactions to the battle system, but um, I wasn't able to get that far. I would like to continue with this just to see how far I'm able to take this. Uh, but for the time being, this is the current demo that I have working. So awesome. Uh, yeah, games are always like an order of magnitude or two <laughs> more, more difficult than you think they're going to be. This is a uh, pretty impressive. All the all that stuff. Um, <laughs> what did you? Uh, can you tell me a little bit about the? like the character movement and uh yeah so for the yes yeah, um so there's sprites so i i i have if i could show you um what i did is uh reveal and explore here we go okay so each character has its own like sprite and these sprites i decided to um prop them because uh, i use canvas uh for the for the for to um map everything and then i created classes and when the, those classes i um i propped each individual sprite by three so only one part of that sprite would show and then on movement that sprite were to loop through um through this part and through this part and through this part and whatever Key I press down, that sprite would that sprite would change the um the 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 image uh depending on if you're moving left, right, up, or down. Um let me see if I could find it on my code. My code is a mess, but I don't want this. Uh So, let me see. Oh, I believe it's this. So each sprite, or I have a sprite, I have a class called sprites. And within that class, I did constructed with position image frames, uh, which is a max of one. Um, and then within that, I just loop the frames for it. Um, and then depending on what, what I do as far as the key strokes, uh, that frame changes um, over time. Um, with the value and the elapsed 
which is on the draw. Um, pretty much what would be the, here we go, um, the frame max. Um, if the frame max is greater than one, then the frame elapse is gonna, be, is gonna increment to that. And then the frame is gonna be 10%. So it doesn't go really, really, really fast. Um, I still have a hard time understanding most of this, uh, but I think I have the general idea as to like how that works. But as far as changing the directions that they go, I um, each each character, the sprite of each character, because I wanted to incorporate whatever character you select to be the character you control. So the on my database. I have specific um, job classes. If I were to look at my app for my characters, no, not my characters. Uh, yeah, my characters actually. No, my job stats. Um, the job stat has the sprites uh, per each class that that, that 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 it's associated with. So if it's a knight. Um, that job class for the instance is going to have all the sprites for the night. Um, and that way, when I move the character around, depending on which character session is saved in state, those sprites I could pull from state. And then depending on the keystroke that, that, that I press, um, those sprites are going to show up on the browser, if that makes sense. <laughs> I don't know that answered it, but... Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Uh, awesome. Any other questions? Cool. Good stuff. Who would you like to go next? Uh, let's go with Eric. Nice. All right. Uh, could you stop sharing? There we go. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, okay. Cool. All right. We all good? Cool. Yeah. So my uh my app is called Worker. You guys probably remember it from last week. Um I have added a lot of stuff to this. So first things first things first, as you see, you come in, you gotta log in, kinda have to log in. Can't actually that's not supposed to happen. That's supposed to redirect the login. I was I was I was finding bugs and bugs fixing up, up until like ten minutes before, so. But uh, so yeah, we can uh we can create an account, you can go through, create an account if you want, but this uh the app isn't really that interesting unless you already have you know data. So I have an account, each of that, that has a bunch of data preceded. The login, welcome each of that. This is the uh, you know account details page. I can change my username, change my password, delete my account. It gives a, a confirmation. Are you sure about it? If you if you uh want to uh if you're you know really sure about deleting your account. Um, first things first, I say let's go to the calendar page. It works. <laughs> the calendar page actually works. You can see we've got a calendar going on. In each uh, day, they have uh, a variable number of tasks, to-dos, as they're called in the database. You can see, you know, they uh, line up and uh, just kind of fill up, go around. You can uh, change the months, and it fills in accurately. Uh, so that's pretty cool. It's pretty nice. Uh, don't really have much functionality. It's more just a view to see everything you got, you got coming up, you know, right in front of you, which is nice. Uh, if you go over to the teams page, you can see you got a list of every team. I uh, added myself to every single team that I generated when I seeded the database. So these were all uh, generated with random words for the name and random companies, which you can actually, it was a feature of Faker, which is cool. But you can see for each team, you got a list of the users and uh, their role. So owner, manager, senior, and then uh, I don't know if I have any. 
actually. That's funny. Oh, yeah. Junior down here. So there are four roles, manager, owner, senior, and junior uh, with different, um, what's the word? Uh, uh, they can do different things. Uh, so as you can see, the only the owner can delete uh, a particular group. So I can't delete this team. I can only delete Yeet Boys because that's the one I made. Um, I can also add a user. Pulls up a nice little drop down. Uh, this is every single user in the database. So you can imagine that would probably get unwieldy with more than like a hundred users. So, you know, non MVP stretch goal for the future. I would make this uh, searchable, but as it stands, it works out just fine the way it is. So, uh, if I add, you know, if I if I try to add, say, Courtney. Uh, as a junior, you submit. Uh, if you guys can see the, uh, it throws an error. It's already in the team. Like, all right, let's add. Uh, let's add Brian instead as a senior. Submit shows up nice and easy. Um, well, let's remove a user. This only lists the uh, users that are currently in the team. So let's get rid of a. Uh, Let's get rid of let's get rid of Brian. Boom, gone. Super nice and easy. And uh those work separately for each one, which is not which is pretty nice. Uh we go, oh yeah, and then uh obviously you can make a new team. Um I don't know, uh flat iron stool. Uh flat iron group. Gorp. Oh my god, yeah, it's spelled. <laughs> Flat iron school. Submit. Shows up at the bottom. As you can see, I'm the owner automatically when I create it. Uh, I can then, you know, add users if I want. Uh, I'm not going to do that at the moment, but it's an option. And then uh, if you go over to the projects page, this is just a list of every single project that uh, is associated with me. And uh, the next task that I have to do, along with the status and its due date, uh, you can see, you know, good amount of uh, options. Let's go down to a uh, go to the moon. If we click on view details, pops up this really nice uh, drag and drop board. Uh, you can see title of the projects, the uh, users associated with the project, the people in the team. Um, these uh, to dos are draggable. And you can see they show up every single uh, user. So this you, this to do this task research moon rocks. Uh, it was created by Sherry. Well, it's created by me as Sherry, the account Sherry, and uh, it shows up on this project even though I'm logged in as Etavet because it shows every single person's uh, tasks for the project. And you can move them around. They uh, automatically update. Uh, you have to save changes to save it to the back end. But uh, you can probably see down there, patched through. Uh, so now that's saved. Uh, can add it to do. Uh, I don't know what else. Uh, purchase rocket fuel. Let's say I have to do that by uh, the twenty second. I hit submit. Automatically loads up. And uh, this is automatically uh, saved. This is already saved on the back end. You don't need to save changes. That's only when you uh, move it. Let's say I, uh, oh, I'm already done purchasing rocket fuel. Cool. Save the changes. Really nice. You can also add a user. It's the pretty much the exact same form as in the uh, Teams. Uh, you know, just list of users and then user role. For this one, there's only senior and junior. There's no uh, manager. Managers are only for teams. For projects, you only have owner, senior, and junior. Um. Yeah, and then... Uh, can delete project again an are you sure which is really nice uh it's pretty cool you can uh go back go back into it resets everything's loaded up pretty nicely uh you can go to a different one these deletes they all work you can see alexa wants to eat some shorts i'm gonna say don't do that alexa uh so let's save those changes and uh yeah and then log out uh, let's log in. Let's log in as Alexa. Now all of these accounts have the same password. Showing you password, they're all password. 
uh, submit. All right, welcome Alexa. So now if I go over to calendar, I got nothing because I deleted my only to-do. Go over to teams, you can see the teams I'm on. You know, projects, different projects. Um, yeah. And then if you go into account details, change username, new username, uh, Alexa2. And then type in your password. Uh, if you don't get it wrong, your passwords do not match, you can't submit. Uh, so submit, boom, welcome Alexa2. And that automatically updates, obviously, on everything. So you're all good there. Um, you can also change your password. This just says new password, con confirm new password, no username. Uh, delete your account. You delete your account. Your uh, should work. But add to do. Uh, delete account today. Submit. Boom. Alexa two has a delete account. So let's go to account details. Delete account. And if I log in as Ethanbet again, go over to projects, teams, you can see Alexa, Alexa 2 doesn't show up on any of these. She's all gone. I, unfortunately, I don't remember which uh, project I just added her into. I think it was the first one. No, doesn't matter. But that to do that was created by her is also deleted when she when her account's deleted. And then, uh, yeah, last thing to do, uh, delete the team. Let's delete a project as well. Uh, delete this project. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, it's uh, pretty much it. You know, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, I think it's, you know, pretty cool, pretty cool functionality. Uh, yeah. Cool. A lot, there's a lot of a lot of functionality yeah um can you tell me a little bit about uh, i remember we were talking about the uh drag and drop stuff between the columns yeah talk about a little bit like the decisions you had to make and what you decided on uh yeah so um i mean if you want to look at my uh actual this is the function that handles dragging and dropping when you drag and drop that's what this does that's all that does it just updates the state uh, it's, <laughs> let me tell you, that shit was wild. Um, but yeah, you know, you just got your columns. Uh, you can see you have a separate, uh, sub object within the, uh, state object for each column along with the name and, uh, the items. What I do, uh, is when this first starts up, I fetch all the to-dos associated with this project. I uh, then use this update columns function, which I wrote to uh, take in a task, a list of tasks and a method. And then I, uh, ooh, this uh, structured clone function, game changer, huge game changer. It, it does a deep copy instead of a shallow copy. So in case uh, y'all don't know what that is, a shallow copy is like spreading, um, you know, most most uh functions that return a new array return a shallow copy. Uh deep copy instead of so a shallow copy, any nested arrays or objects, uh just the new array uh or object just ends up uh with pointers to the original memory addresses, while a deep copy, like a structured clone, creates entirely new uh memory addresses for those nested objects and stuff. So that lets me uh adjust the state without actually adjusting the state and uh you can see here just really go to town on this uh, on this nested object uh i got a nice little switch in here for post patch and delete and then the very end just one single set columns function or set columns call which is really nice and uh yeah i mean it's you know i, I, I pretty much followed the uh boilerplate code when it comes to this, uh, lot, lot of I, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I'd be able to figure this all out on my own. You can see there, um, let me see, there's one map here. There is another callback here, another callback here. Like it's, it's 
pretty crazy. Another callback in here, like it gets pretty uh it got pretty wild, pretty hairy. Um, but yeah, all worked out in the end. Pretty right. nice. <laughs> I'd even you can see you can reorder them. Nice. Save those changes. Yeah. Cool. Other questions. All right. Who is next? All right. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll pass it off to Gabby. Cool. Get it. Cool. Um, all right. So I tried this on my own, but I think I can share my phone. Share. Um, yeah, so my app is called Table Vote. Um, I did end up putting in a create account, but I'll go ahead and start with um, logging in. Um, I did also change the login to be uh, by phone number uh, because we're going to use that now. Um, and I think Zoom hides my password field, but I am inputting a password. Um, and then you're logged in. Um, it does automatically bring you to the party page. Um, you do also have the vote. I have a party that's already completed. And then there's the profile. Um, I kept this party here just because I also added this little menu button where you can move something to a past party or just completely delete it. Um, but I'll go ahead and just start a new party. Um, this is all pretty much the same. You can set the price range. Um, where do we want to, I'll, I'll just do, I'll do it by zip code because that's fun. Um, and I did add some constraints with the username. So if you do try to add like a username that doesn't exist yet, um, Fred, I don't know, and set the search radius, uh, it'll tell you that there is no username or no user with the username Fred. So um i'll just do again my cat and my dog submit party has been created uh we'll go off to vote um i did also add this feature where you can invite users um and this brings up like an sms thing and you can send it to whoever you want you can like pick somebody from your contacts um i don't know I don't know if it'll yeah it'll pull people up um so yeah i'll just copy this code for later when i create a new account so this is uh like the party id i did change the party ids from being um like a one two three four and just assign the next one to like a random code um so every party has like a unique code that is what's then populated into the text message um okay so we'll go into vote um bunch of stuff like this one um and then it updates it is not as slow as it was originally with my deployed server but um still a little slower than i'd like it to be um i'll go ahead and log out and i'll sign up as a new user um and i'll name them fred so they can sign up um, and oh, if you don't have any parties, it'll give you this little thing to say start a new party. Um, I'll click join an existing party because we do have that party code. So we'll paste it in there and join. You've been added to the party. Um, and then you can see the party that we had previously made. Um, and you can see that I already voted on that one. So we'll go ahead and vote. Um, I don't love this top one where like if it's too long of a name it doesn't go into the next one but that's just me being picky about it um you can click on it and it'll redirect you to the yelp page if you go back we'll go ahead and vote on it um oh i did also add uh well i'll do it in a different one but there's another button that comes up here if the party is completed you can move it to your past parties um, which is this section. This is a brand new user, so they don't have any past parties or misconnections. 
uh, actually just kidding, misconnections are things that you voted for, um, but like haven't been picked. So since this party isn't completed, this is technically something you voted for and didn't get picked. Um, so we'll log out. Um, and then of course, because it's phone numbers, I have to see what every user's phone number is. Um, log in. Uh, so yeah, here's the old party that is already completed. You can move it to your past parties. Um, and then when you go in here, you'll see your past parties. And you can also see the winner um, gives you this close button or view on Yelp. And just vote for this one. Submit. And then just have one more to vote. Uh, okay. And last vote. And vote. And the votes are in. You can view the winning restaurant. Um, you can also view on Yelp and you can notify your party, which this takes all of the phone numbers um, for the users in a party and it automatically populates them there. And then you can just send the message. Um, that's kind of fun. Um, yeah, and then once, yeah, again, once you have like a completed party, you can move it to your past parties. Um, I think that's it. And this misconnections thing, it pulls, um, so I'm using two different parts of the Yelp API. So the one that pulls all of the places that you can vote for is like um, a search, like it's kind of like a general search, you put in all the parameters and then it gives you a response. Uh, but for these, I'm like uh, persisting the Yelp ID for a specific restaurant into the user's vote and then um, calling to that Yelp by ID and then giving it that um, ID as a parameter. And so then it pulls all of these. Um, and yeah, same thing. You can go to the uh, website for the specific restaurant. Um, and I think that's it. Awesome. Yeah. We're cool looking. Uh, yeah, good stuff. Thanks. Um, can you talk a little bit about uh, like the what the difference is, like how it feels, what's harder, what's here maybe, or probably just what's harder uh, about developing for a, a mobile app like this than a web app? Yeah, um, I think Jason can also speak to this because we like definitely had a lot of similar issues, but I think, uh, I mean, some of the, um, like instead of just putting things into a div, like you put it into a view and then that specific view is like what you will see um i can i can actually just show some of my code if that makes it easier um yeah so like for uh a restaurant list which is what we would do like um i don't know i think when we did like uh uh hog wild or something where there was like a, a list of things and we'd map over it this is just a flat list which is uh, kind of gives you that scrollable view of things um, and then inside of that, I have a restaurant card, which is um, there in a touchable opacity, which is what lets you click on it. And then within there, there's like views. Um, and I have different views for a lot of different things. Um, yeah, it's it was definitely pretty confusing at first. Oh, this one was the, the stars. I completely forgot to talk about the stars, but it's like an array because it gives you a specific number of stars and then you have to map them to give it a certain number of icons. Um, yeah, I think that's, it's it's pretty similar, but like everything is kind of name different and it's like, it almost feels like a different language, but it's not. Um, oh, hey, Jason, I see your hand. Oh, just kidding. That's a hand because we're yeah, that's just go. for, yeah. Never mind. Um, yeah, so, 
yeah, that's that's kind of it. Um, I also used use context for a lot of things because I don't know if this is true, but somebody in the East cohort was also doing a mobile app and they said that like Redux and Recoil doesn't really work well with React Native. I'm not sure if that's true, but um, use context was super easy to implement and I just have a bunch of states um, that I use in, in most of the components. Awesome, cool. Yeah. Uh, any other questions? Yeah, go for it. The real native, did you like use the documentation to learn it or like how did you like learn about it? Yeah, um, pretty much. Yeah, I like they have some they have like pretty good documentation and like a lot of Googling and a lot of like seeing like templated versions of things. Um, also, a lot of things are like packages that you have to install. So like the drop down is not something that's like built into react native so it's like a package that has to be installed to then be used um and i think a lot of things are like that too even just like navigation like navigating to different things um and also styling is not i mean i originally thought i was going to use like a styling library but it's all kind of just like uh react native has a style sheet and so then i just like it's kind of like vanilla css in the style sheet uh for each thing that you want to use it on, um, which can get confusing and really annoying. Um, so I just kind of recycled a lot of it. Cool. Other questions? Yeah. Yeah, Gail. Oh, no, that was a clap. Yeah. <laughs> Very confusing with reactions. <laughs> cool. Awesome. If there's nothing else, who would you like to go next? This light isn't responding. Please check its network connection and power. I'll pass it to Jake. All right, let me get it open real quick. We are good. Okay, so this is the profile page I made for it. So uh, it shows my name, my avatar, and the rating that I have on the site. It's an e-commerce website. If you click the home button, it takes you to all the listings. These were just made using Faker and um, you can leave a rating on these. These are two that I made for the profile I'm on. I have a lot of ratings because when I was testing it, so you're not gonna see an update, but these are being rounded. It's like an average, it's some insanely long number. Uh, before I was rounding them, I <laughs> it was printing the number really long. It was, it was a whole ordeal. So uh, you can add things to your cart. So let's uh, go and add a few things. Go ahead and head over here. This is your cart. Shows you your items. You can remove an item from your cart if you'd like. Um, let's throw some random address in like 124 Street Street, Washington. Uh, some random things for the cart. And if we check out, successful purchase and it sends you back to your cart um and it also sends you an email of your receipt and it shows you what you bought and it gives you your total uh it's using email.js uh it's extremely easy to set up and uh it's real nice um you i don't know that okay um you can edit your profile so you can like change the avatar uh it got to log back in jake test got the new profile picture so the car um create a new listing uh do like because i already have a picture of a dog create your listing uh oh the shopping cart go here got the dog um we can log out. Let's create a new account. Uh, test. We'll just throw test. Uh, test. Yeah. Do the dog picture. And it logs you in automatically when you create your account. And I have no ratings yet, so there's going to be nothing. And you have to verify to be able to, uh, to call it create listings. So you can go ahead and verify, and this is just using uh, Quill JS, I believe is what it was called. And you put in a reason why you'd like to be verified. I want to sell items. 
go ahead and verify yourself and you log back in test test sign in and now you can create listings that's pretty much, oh you can also search it's so like dog this is the dog um in the future i want to make it so you can search by like uh have like a drop down for different categories um also when i was implementing stripe they were telling me to try to use like a business account and i had to give them a like I did like ID verification for some reason, and I just it was such a hassle. I was just like, I'll add that because it was a stretch goal. I'll add that later on because I think I'm gonna put this on my like resume and stuff to show. So I'm gonna add Stripe. I'm gonna keep adding on to the project because it's been a lot of fun for me. So yeah, cool. That's pretty much yeah. it. Stripe is a uh... Stripe is challenging to work with sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a pain, but like it wasn't that hard to read the documentation and stuff. It was just you have to go through so many steps to get it like just set up. Yeah, for sure. Um, cool. Anyone have any questions here? All right, looks like we're wrapping it up with Jason then. Yeah, good stuff. Had to find my, find my mute button. It, for some reason, it likes to run off on me. All right. I assume the screen with the emulator is coming through. I can't tell that right now. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. Uh, I also did a React Native a mobile app. Um, Backlogger Books is the name. And it's a tool for people to keep track of. Uh, for some reason, I'm on a draw setting here mouse there we go uh yep so it's a tool for people to be able to search up books they may want to add to their list of uh, to read uh and be able to check them off write reviews read reviews by other users and that kind of thing um so start up let's just start up by creating an account because you'll need an account in order to do anything and uh, let's call this test account if i can spell i'll give it a password uh there's several validations monitoring this form. You can't really, uh, there's a lot of things the app won't let you do. I'm not going to go over every single one of them, but um, basically it has to be a password over six characters. The username has to be over five characters um, and various other things to prevent the app from breaking. Once you create the account, it's going to log you in automatically. Um and you can go straight to searching for books. You can check the backlog. In this case, this user is brand new. They don't have any. Um, you can search for, and I, I know a couple authors that give me really good results. Uh, so we'll start with this one. And you can see a list of the books by the author. This is a menu that'll pop up with uh, context to choose which uh, field you'd like to search by. Um, ISBN tends to be a single or very few results. Sometimes there's a couple editions of books that share ISBNs, uh, but usually it's just, uh, I usually just use author for the most part or title from time to time. Uh, so you can go into each book and view some details on it, including the average rating it's gotten on the app so far. Uh, you can backlog the book to add it to your list. Uh, I'm going to stay here because I want to look at the reviews as well. You can see uh, some users have left reviews as well as some ratings for the book. Um, and then you can go to the, uh, I'm going to click this again because it does uh, pop up a context menu that says, uh, error, you've already backlogged this. Do you want to go see it there? So we'll go see it in the backlog. Uh, over here, you can mark whether you've finished the book or not. Uh, you can go back to the details page because that's where you can access the reviews and write a review yourself. Uh, view presentation. And we'll give it a rating of nine and it'll post your review you can go back into the reviews and see that the new review is now showing um and it'll update the average rating as well um yeah so that's the uh that's the basic loop of the app um a couple things to note you can uh, just to make make sure that we can see them uh log into one account that has several um several backlogs already already saved in the system. Uh, this is all persistent. When you backlog, you can actually see the patch happening over on the left side there. 
Um, we'll go back to that same book, which will maybe not be in this list. It is. And you can read the reviews that were left by other uh, other users. You can see the new one is still there and has persisted. Uh, if you try to leave a review uh, with no text, it won't let you do that. If you try to leave a review on a book you've already reviewed, it also won't let you do that. Um, one review per user, uh, per book. Um, and I think that's most of it. Uh, one more thing to note is that if you log back into, we go back to test account and we log in, um, you can go into the account details. Uh, you, you can actually register a favorite book uh, and a favorite author. I'll do that really quick just to show that it's working. Uh, set favorite author, set favorite title, and then you can go back to the account details and view that information. Um, you It also give you a list of any books that you've reviewed. Uh, you can change the password. Uh, again, lots of validations here. Uh, I'll just change it to a password. Or... Do password two. Uh, we actually have to, this has to be password one or password regular. Or two, change the password, that'll accept it. Log out, test account. And if you try to use the old password, it won't work. Uh, so you do need to use the new password to log back in. Two. Um, and then the last thing about the account details is you can delete the account. It will give you a confirmation. Are you sure you want to delete? Uh, it can't be undone and all your reviews and backlog books will be deleted. Um, and just to illustrate that, we'll log back into the main account here. Oops, wrong button. We'll go, we'll get, we'll go over that in just a moment. Uh, in the backlog, this is the book we've been working with city of golden shadow. Uh, and you can look at the reviews and you can see that the review has been purged from the user that was deleted. Um, and the last, but certainly not least, because this thing was a pain in the butt. Uh, I'm going to, I've got a little video to show. Uh, this is a screen cap from my actual phone while I was uh, uh, showing the scan, the barcode scanner in person. I was having trouble getting the emulator to hook up to my webcam to, to do it through the emulator. So why not just do it on a telephone? So let's go through this video. It's only about 40 seconds long. You can see it brings you directly to the details page for the book that you scan. And just to illustrate it again, we're gonna swap it out with a different book here just to show that it's working. And it happens really fast. And I was having some trouble getting it to calm down a little bit, but uh, it definitely will scan the, will scan any barcode it sees anywhere in its field of view. So, um, yep, that is the, I think that's everything. I'm looking at my list really quick. That's everything. Yeah. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about the barcode scanning stuff? Yeah. So the barcode scanner, it was a little tricky to get it to work because basically the barcode scanner it scans over and over again, like every half second, it seems like until something in your app tells it to do something different other than scan. And I think it was kind of some uh, asynchrony issues going on with how it, 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 it still scans twice before it, before it seems to register that it's supposed to change its state so that it's already scanned and stop scanning. Mm -hmm. And that's that little button that you saw pop up. Mm -hmm. uh, that's just kind of, that's a button that I put in to make it so it's like, stop, stop doing what you're doing. Just uh, pop up a button. And if it fails to scan the barcode, which it, it can do, I have some books that have some kind of beat up barcodes and it won't find a result for them. Um, you can click that button again to try to scan any barcodes in the, in the field of view again. Um, so that, that's uh that was a neat little addition. Uh, and yeah, this is just a, it's a library imported from, uh, from Expo, which is the platform I built the app on. Expo is a really nice modular uh, platform for building on um, both iOS and Android um, for, for iOS and Android devices if you don't have a Mac. Um, since I don't have a Mac, I, it's the only way I could develop an iOS app if I wanted to. Um, so I used Expo, but it has a lot of cool tools. Um, some I've used, uh, some I used and then backed out on, like the navigation. I'm using the uh, the standard React uh, React navigation or um, React native router 
as opposed to the Expo router. The Expo router was cool, but it was really not cooperating with Recoil and uh, the other navigator did. So Expo has some cool features and I definitely integrated a few of those here and there to um, uh, mostly make my life easier. Yeah, mostly make my life easier. Cool, I love it. Um, yeah, I have some fun stories about barcode stuff, but we'll save it for another time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it gets um, pretty crazy. I was trying to scan barcodes off of like a, like a, a web page, uh, Google search for just barcodes of book ISBNs. Uh, yeah. And it was just, it would just, it's random, whichever one it sees the best at any point in time is the one it decides to scan. So nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, cool. Anyone else have questions? Is that a Jake hand question or is that a Jake didn't put his hand down? I didn't put my hand down. Cool. <laughs> awesome. Um, okay. Yeah, sweet. Uh, amazing stuff all around. Uh, folks, that is uh, all of the project work that you will have be doing for this class and you are, uh, you're done. Uh, everything, look, oh man, so good. Can't tell you enough good things about all this stuff. Um, yeah, wow, my brain's just frozen. It's all, it's all so great. Um, super proud of all this. Uh, yeah, cool. Uh, so uh, I'm going to stop the recording. Uh, if anyone wants to say anything to uh, the future, now is the time. Otherwise, uh, thanks anyone who is watching. Enjoy the projects, and we're out.